Hi everybody, I'm out of the workshop again this week and I'm in a rather echoey and empty room where I'm going to try and attempt a very quick and dirty repair of a lath and plaster wall that's completely shot. That's coming up next. So yes, a little bit of domestic trivia in the 10 minute household this week. Uh, we're decorating one of the rooms, long involved story, we've got new carpets coming before too long so we've got to decorate quickly this room in particular because this wall has been problematic for a while. Got the room empty and the, the basic issue is that this is an old Victorian property with lath and plaster walls and this has had a, a bodge of a repair at some point. Not by me I hasten to add but basically there's a big lump in this corner you can see if I put a straight edge over that how far that out that is both horizontally and vertically as well. Now normally it feels like this is just a big lump of plaster or filler. Normally I'd just sand that back but this side which is the original lath and plaster is just completely shot so the only thing that's holding that together is a skin of plaster itself. So what I'm going to try and do is drill through this and bond that back onto the laths in order to keep that secure then I can get a sander on this and then refill it, put some easy fill over it just to sort of tidy that up a little bit. This is going to have a big wall covering over it, one of Mrs. Ten Minutes lovely quilts is going to go on the wall but what I don't want to do is take a sander to that and have this entire section of plaster come off. What I should be doing of course is stripping all this off and reboarding it, drywalling it and plastering over it but that's just not going to happen right now so I just need a relatively quick and dirty fix and that's what I'm going to attempt in this video. So having spent a few minutes protecting a carpet that's going to be replaced next week, don't ask, I've fitted a tile bit into my drill and I'm drilling through the plaster skin in the hope that I'll hit but not drill through one of the laths. The first one's good but the second one hits the gap between them so I mark them up with a sharpie and carry on working my way down the wall just inboard from the crumbly edge and then I enlarge the holes and clean them out a little with a masonry bit before vacuuming them out completely to get rid of the worst of the debris. Okay so next up is I'm going to take some PU adhesive and squirt it liberally into these holes. Now there is an intermediate step that I'd do if I was trying to make a permanent repair with this and that's that I'd squirt some diluted PVA in there and give it a few hours to dry just to try and settle any dust. It's, I, I don't want to do a temporary repair on this. I'm just trying to stop this wall getting any worse while I get a sander on this. So I'm just going to go straight in with the PVA. This sets in about, in, in the, excuse me, in the PU adhesive. This sets in about five minutes. So I'm going to pop that in. I'm going to use these repair washers and a little self-tapping screw to hold that in nice and tight. So hopefully the adhesive will give a chance, to get a good grab on whatever's in there and we'll see how well it holds in about 10 minutes time. PU adhesive foams up slightly so I'm shoving the nozzle hard up against the laths before squeezing out a glob of glue in the hope that some of it will get squeezed either side of the hole and bond the plaster back into the laths. And with the holes filled with adhesive, I can screw on the repair washers. I'm using washers to spread the load, obviously, as I don't want to drive the screws through the crumbly plaster and make it worse. So there we are, only one sort of minor crisis when <laughs> I discovered that all these self-tapping screws that I bought had uh, Torx heads on them. And of course I don't have uh, a full Torx bit set with me. So yeah, with the five minute adhesive already in the wall. Uh, yes, had to rummage around in the screw uh, in the drill case to get the right uh, uh, ragtag selection of screws to make that work. But it seems to have gone in fairly well. It's quite, you know, it, it's hard up against the laths. Let's see if the adhesive holds without uh, any sort of PVA or whatever, because there's bound to be some dust in there. But we'll give that a try, and I will give that 10 minutes or so for the adhesive to set. So time for a time for a cup of tea, I think. And one quick brew later, I can remove the screws and chisel the washers off the wall, causing absolutely no damage whatsoever. Okay, so all things considered, I think we can call that a tolerable success. Obviously, 
back here where the, the glue hasn't taken. The plaster's still shot as you expect. And the other side, still a bit squishy where it abuts this and I'm expecting to need to do some work on this edge. But what I don't want to do is for the whole thing to come away. And that does, at the moment, seem to be doing the job. So I'm going to get a sander on this and sand this edge back just to try and smooth it out a little bit. And then I can fill the whole thing and more sanding, more filling, more sanding, and maybe a little bit of painting. But, uh, mm, okay, I, I'll crack on with that, and we'll see, uh, I'll leave the camera running, we'll see if this <laughs> falls apart on. So yes, this is pretty much what I was expecting to happen, uh, where the crumbly plaster has shot and where the edge of the good but badly applied <laughs> new plaster uh, joined together. Obviously the, the old plaster is just going to crumble away, but where I fixed it, where I drilled in and glued it, it's actually pretty good to the last. So that's just going to hold it in place while I can get a skim over the whole thing. But what I want to do to start with we're just going to hoover this out, vacuum it out, get it sprayed, and get some filler on it. I'm using a product called Easy Fill. It's a bit like a cross between a plaster and a filler. And it's used a lot here as a drywall compound, or mud as our American cousins would call it. But here I'm just using it to fill and bind the plaster back onto the laths, forcing it under the edge of the old plaster, and then filling over. Okay, well this has had a chance to dry overnight. Uh, we're not looking for a perfect finish on this obviously because there's always a little bit of a few lumps and bumps that appear as the filler sort of starts to, as it sets, it sort of sags a little bit and expands slightly. So we're just going to go over this with a fairly coarse abrasive and then we'll put a second top coat, what I hope is going to be a top coat, over that just very thinly, just a thin skim over this and then that can be sanded when it's dry. I'm going to allow it for a, a good few hours, but we'll rub this down first, then get that coat on, then come back to it when it's completely dry. Okay, so that's come up pretty well. Uh, it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but it's, the wall is so much flatter. In fact, it, if anything, it dips in slightly here, so I'll be able to fill that and get that back. And again, very slight on this, but nothing we can't, nothing I'm particularly bothered about with that. Um, yeah, a tiny amount here. I suppose I could, I could sand that back a bit more, but I'd rather keep as much muck on that wall as possible, really, to try and keep it as solid as we can. So, yeah, uh, all good so far. Another coat of Easy Fill on that, uh, and then we can let that set and see how that goes. Okay, so that's uh, reasonably enough, kind of what we're aiming for. Fairly obviously, we're not trying to get a perfectly flat, even finish. About 50 people are typing just as well. Uh, no, uh, it's to get a finish that I can sand smooth once this is set, and that's okay. That's a reasonably, it's thick enough that I can, it's packed out this center bit, and I can sand that smooth. But obviously, that's got to set, so we'll leave that for a few hours and come back to it in a bit. Right. A few hours later, I'm back on the sander with a finer grit this time, trying to get as smooth a finish as possible, and checking regularly to make sure I'm staying reasonably flat. Now, one thing that is worth doing if you're sanding a lot of filler, is just to occasionally take the bag out, because the fill is so fine, take the bag out, seal it up, and give it a bit of a shake, just to make sure the, the surface of the bag isn't clogged up. Then you can unseal it again. And you 
Good to go again. Well, I think that's that. Um, I think that's that for this week's little repair job. Uh, what I do now, what I do next is put a, a base coat, a mist coat on that, because that'll show up any other flaws, but you don't, they don't always show up until you get a coat of paint on it. So I get a, a mist coat on that, let that dry overnight, and we'll see what it looks like in the morning. But as far as I'm concerned, that's good enough. It may need a little bit of fine surface filler on it, just to clean a couple of parts up but sometimes the roller rash will cover that and it's not really a problem so uh, so far so good i hope you've enjoyed this little diversion into the wacky world of uh, <laughs> uh, home diy i've got a few bits and pieces like this coming up if you did then uh, give me a, a shout out in the comments down below to see if you'd like to see some of those other bits and pieces as well i've got it's a, it's a week of domestic trivia. I've got a, a dripping kitchen tap to fix and I've got a squeaking tumble dryer. Uh, let me know if you'd like to see a video on those or if I'll just keep those uh, to myself. But that's it for this week's video. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you found it uh, useful and interesting. Uh, if you did, give the video a thumbs up, share it freely amongst your friends and don't forget to subscribe for more weekly, mostly in the workshop videos. Uh, I want to take a second to thank all of my Patreon supporters, without whom I wouldn't be able to keep the lights on here. And obviously having the lights on when you're making videos is a real big help. Uh, if you uh, join the Patreon party, uh, then you get a weekly week in the workshop vlog from me as well, an extra little weekly exclusive video, plus some plans and things for old jobs and other bits and pieces. Uh, check it out at patreon.com forward slash 10 minute workshop. Uh, and see if it's uh, uh, see if you think what I'm doing over there is worth your time. But that is it for this week. Thanks ever so much to all of my Patreon supporters. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care.